You know, it's been an absolutely beautiful fall out here on the western edge. Mother Nature has blessed us with some great weather, and we certainly have been taking advantage of it. But we're praying for moisture to assist in alleviating the dust and fire conditions out here. A friend of mine once said, we are always just two days away from a drought in North Dakota. Thank you for tuning in to Western Edge Living, presented by CHI San Alexius Health Dickinson. We have another great show for you today, but before we get started, I'd like to take this time to remind you that you're invited to Night of Champions, Friday, November 15th, at the Fraternal Order of Eagles in Dickinson. Are you good at games like Jenga, Ring Toss, or other fun games like that? Even if you're not skilled in those activities, come on out and support CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson on what promises to be a great night of fun and fundraising. Game on, give back. Night of Champions, Friday, November 15th, beginning at 6 p.m. You know, life is always in motion. Change is inevitable. Terry Thiel has been a fixture here at the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau for many years. Her passion for this community has led to some great projects coming to fruition here on the Western Edge. From relocating to this brand new facility, to filling the motels and hotels with visitors from near and far and so much more, her tenure has been remarkable to say the least. But are things about to change at the Dickinson CVB? We'll find out as we visit with Terry today here on our show. I express my sincerest gratitude to you for watching today. Get comfortable and stay tuned because Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexius Health Dickinson, starts now. CHI St. Alexius Health Dickinson presents Western Edge Living. Pretzel Lovers, the Thirsty Pretzel, located inside the Worst Shop in Dickinson, features eight flavors of pretzels with more to come. Choose from honey mustard, French onion, dill pickle, and more. And gluten-free pretzels are available. The Thirsty Pretzel also has granola, caramel crunch mix, and snack mix. Various quantities and gift boxes are available, and they deliver to Dickinson businesses. Find the Thirsty Pretzel on Facebook, call 701-590-1499, or stop in at the Worst Shop. The Thirsty Pretzel. Medora Boot and Western Wear in the heart of historic Medora. Open 10 to 5 every day, but closed Tuesdays. Boot is their middle name, and they have over 1,500 pairs of boots in stock for all ages and sizes. They also have the all-new higher boot with many new styles. Western clothes, belts, caps, hats, and more, including a great line of toys and longhorn wall decor. Medora Boot and Western Wear for the cowboy and cowgirl in you. Medora Boot and Western Wear. At Poncheros, we put a lot of work into building every burrito to last for about 10 minutes. Poncheros, come build your better. At Poncheros, every tortilla starts as a small ball of dough. Then it's fresh pressed to perfection. That's just how we dough it. Poncheros, come build your better. She drives a pickup, she wears cowboy boots, cowgirl boots, uh, she rides a horse, and it is my opinion that those were some of the assets that led to a successful career in marketing Western North Dakota. Welcome to Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexia's Health Dickinson, and who am I talking about? None other than Terry Thiel, 
who has been with the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau for a long, long time, since about 98? 97, fall 97. of 97, yeah. Yeah, and you know, we've done this how many times? Hundreds of times on the radio, yeah. a few uh, a few shots on television, and uh, good to see you. Thanks, thanks uh, for having me. Life is good? Yeah, good, it's busy. I couldn't, you know, thinking of an angle on, uh, on uh, what to talk about today. We've never had a shortage of that, for one thing. Yeah. Um, the one thing that I know about you that will probably catch you a little off guard is you bring up your relationship with your mother often. Oh, yeah. You, you were born and raised on the eastern side of the mm -hmm. state, correct? Mm -hmm. and, I was, yeah. And you, had a, you yeah. have a wonderful relationship with her. Yeah, I really do. She's 85 now. She looks like she's maybe 75 or, or younger. And uh -huh. uh, she's always been an individual has been appreciative of everything. And so I guess I've kind of always wanted to model after that. And, and I, I just appreciate things around me or people. Uh -huh. You know, we got a great community. we got a great area. And um, she's always thankful. So, so am I. What was life like growing up uh, with your mom and growing up in the Grand Forks area, correct? Yeah, Grand Forks. Uh, East Grand Forks on the okay. other side, just outside of town. So mm -hmm. um, we had a group of homes out there, partly relatives, but other than just neighbors. And it was a, it was a neighborhood that everybody became family. So we, uh, we all were very, very close out there. Uh, it was a great place, but I always wanted to, to ranch and come out west from the time I can remember. I started working at vet clinics back in Grand Forks, and my, uh, my grandfather had a farm down by Valley City, had cattle, and I was out there all the time. And so that was my first aspiration that I had. Yes, and uh, when you moved out here in 97, you took on a, a role as executive director of the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau. And you packed up two horses and off you came. Well, actually, no, I started before that because okay. I went down to Hedinger in 81 and I then see. I started working at the vet clinic there. So I was okay. at the vet clinic for a few years, years there. Then I ranched for about 10 years south of Scranton, Gascoigne, and worked at the Bowman vet clinic. I was down that area for 17 years. Wow. So actually, I was kind of familiar, familiar with the area. So uh -huh. I worked all the sale barns and that and, and did a lot of cattle work and horses and that. And, and then, um, then I ended up coming up here in fall of '97. So, had you ever thought that uh, you know, running a convention and visitors bureau uh, was something? Was that a career choice that uh, you had aspirations to become, or did you kind of evolve as uh, you came upon you came on your radar and said, "Oh, this sounds good. How did yeah. that work?" Well, um, so I went back to the the West River Vet Clinic probably about night. Oh gosh, 93, 94, mm -hmm. right around there, and I was doing that. And but then there was a little opportunity with their chamber down there to do some secretarial work with that. And so okay, I'll just do that on the side. And they didn't really have an office or anything, and they had a small economic development group down there. So I just took on some extra job with that. And pretty soon they decided that they wanted to just have me go full time. So we started the community relations uh, office in Hedinger had Dakota Buttes Visitors Council, so there was really three of them kind of packed into one job for that. So I did that, I had a side business I had been doing since I was 14, dog grooming, I was patching everything together, you know, people do that for jobs, so. So I was kind of doing all of that together, but I was doing it for the Chamber and Economic Development down there for a, a few years. And then uh, a job opening came up here, and Josh Dorman, I think yeah, you know Josh, I know Josh right? yeah. So Josh was the county extension agent in Hedinger for mm -hmm. a few years, Adams County. And he called me up and he had moved back up here at the time and he said, Terry, you should take a look at this job. And um, so, so I did, but I really had no idea. I didn't have any idea of what a convention visitors bureau was or what a person does, none, none. So wow. I started kind of cold turkey on it. Now, wait a minute. Let's go back a second here. You said dog groomer. You were a dog groomer? Mm hmm I started in 1974. Really? I was 14. I started my own business. Oh, my goodness. Oh, yeah. I did it for many, many years. I did it <laughs> at home, down at the vet clinic, out at the ranch, back at, yeah. It's kind of a big deal, isn't it? Yeah. I've, I've, I've <laughs> gro groomed dogs, cats. They brought them in horse trailers. To, that, was there any training for that that you uh, you took? Because I, I asked because we looked into becoming yeah, dog groomers yeah, and yeah, wow. it's quite extensive on yeah. what you need to learn. Yeah. Uh, how did you come to gain the skills required? So I had an aunt that did it in Bemidji, Minnesota. So, 
I kind of mentored after with her, and, and uh, she took care of me for that. And that's how I learned how to do it, and was do it in the basement of my parents' home. And, and then when I uh, came to Hedinger, and I was doing a, my off time at the vet clinic, and, and I did it at the ranch, and, and, and there again, so. Well, yeah. um, after the show today, let's talk. We've got yeah. three golden retrievers that would probably. Yeah, I did. Yeah, I did a lot of them get them, getting them ready for hunting too. Wow. So it is the, yeah. I this is the, I learned something new yeah. today. I knew that you loved your mother and you talked about her often. She was your best friend, and now I learned that you're also mm -hmm. a, a trained dog groomer. Wow. Mm -hmm. Wow. And cats. And cats. There was a few cats in there too. You do their nails too. No. <laughs> 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 oh, yeah. Terry Thiel, the executive director of the uh, Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, when you came here in 1997, mm -hmm. you had a little different facility than uh, what that mm -hmm. evolved. Talk about, uh, I think you and, uh, was it Tammy Weiler? Mm -hmm. Was she your one of your first employees that yeah. you worked with? Yeah, that was located just to the north of the old Woolworth building the at old that Woolworth, time, yeah. right? So that building's still there, you know, just on the east side of Brevera. Mm -hmm. But that was a building that was about, I, it was there when I got there, you know, with the, with the right. organization. It had been in the uh, chamber prior to that. But we were there for about, let's see, the 97, so 98, 99, and then um, went up to the north end, of course, by the museum center, had uh, approached um, the highway department. They had iced tea grants at the time. We were turned down. And Fred Gangler was a mayor at that time. He said, Terry, you need to, to come back to us and, and let's get something figured out. So, so we built a building and moved in in 2000. So we've been there ever since, and that was a great move. Yeah. And it was interesting. People would say, well, have you seen an increase in visitors? Yeah, quite a I bit. I would say so. Quite a bit, because nobody could find us downtown. Right, right. Yeah. And uh, you're in close proximity to the uh, oh, Yoka yeah. Museum yeah. and uh, a good part of town where there's restaurants and motels and hotels and things. And yeah. So um, some of the challenges that you faced in your tenure as uh, uh, operating the uh, mm -hmm. Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, keeping those, uh, your, your, one of your, I guess, loose um, job descriptions would be to get people into the motel rooms and get people butts in the seats, if mm -hmm, you will. Mm -hmm. um, how challenging has that been for you, for the office itself? Once they get here, it's you know, it's great. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, there has been a challenge. It's probably easier now just because of the different types of media that we have. Right. You know, we didn't have the online, so it was instant. You had to try to get somebody's attention by a publication, a print. Mm -hmm. You know, well, that was hit and miss, and you didn't know at that time if anybody really was, you know, using the ad or not. Um, so that was a challenge with that. When we look at, um, like I said, how things have evolved, now the marketing is so much more of a universal. We can reach those people, and we can get the metrics to do it. Mm -hmm. So I'd have to say, you know, moving now into what we have, is, it's a lot easier for that. Okay. So we've always co opted around with uh, the tourism division. So we've followed what they've had going for their marketing plans. We know, you know, where we do put those different dollars are going to have a return. Um, and then we've also partnered with, with the different groups around us. So Medora, obviously, you know, the biggest attraction is the Theodore Roosevelt National Park. And so we've worked to try to bring people into the park knowing that and yet work with Medora too. Not just Medora, actually. I mean, we've got the Enchanted Highway. We've got... You know, there's so many different ones around us that I've always said it's more like a tree. You've got to feed the roots and then your tree grows, right? right. I mean, it, it's really been good to have all of those. We're the base of the Badlands and we try to not only make Dickinson thrive, but the communities around us. How about Watford City? Has there been a, a working relationship yeah. with the folks in Watford? What a great bunch of folks those it people is. are, aren't they? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. We've done quite a few things together with them. Have you? And in fact, um, let's see, be last year between Williston Watford and Dickinson, we did a Southwest North Dakota golf promotion. Mm -hmm. So all three of us went together with that. And we did, um, we did a full page ad, North Dakota Living. Um, we did um, some different video things. We did um, advertising again through different display ads and that. So yeah, we worked together for the Western side of the state. Wow, changes in the air. Mm -hmm. And mm -hmm. we will talk about that as we uh, continue our conversation with Terry Thiel the executive director of the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, coming up here on Western Edge Living, presented by CHI, San Alexius Health, Dickinson. You know I got two homebrews. You have two jets. <laughs>
And then my Grand Slam, uh, I signed the ball for you. Okay. And it says, Papa, I love you. Why did you do that? Because you taught me everything about baseball. Oh, I'm having fun. I'm so sweet. Service Pro Express Lube, now open on East Villar Dickinson. Gets your vehicle serviced quickly and you're back on the road in no time. No appointment required. You don't even get out of your vehicle. They utilize Service Pro Oil, the only oil produced and refined in the U.S., and it meets or exceeds vehicle manufacturer requirements. Plus, they top off all fluids and perform multi-point inspections. It's part of what's offered at Service Pro Express Lube. Students looking for a part-time gig? Inquire at Service Pro Express Lube. Ask about the scholarship incentive program. Service Pro Express Lube, East Villar Dickinson, next to Lucky's. IT problems have you down and you need to get back up and running? Then call the IT techs at Consolidated. Here's what our customers are saying. Josh called moments after I sent my ticket in and resolved the issue in about 30 seconds after logging onto my computer. Very friendly and professional. Thank you. Eric responded to our request very quickly and resolved the issue for us right away. Great service from Brandon as always. Amazing and helpful as always. Let us help you with your IT issues. Call Consolidated Business Solutions 483-4000 today. Pretzel Lovers, the Thirsty Pretzel, located inside the worst shop in Dickinson, features eight flavors of pretzels with more to come. Choose from honey mustard, French onion, dill pickle, and more. And gluten-free pretzels are available. The Thirsty Pretzel also has granola, caramel crunch mix, and snack mix. Various quantities and gift boxes are available, and they deliver to Dickinson businesses. Find the Thirsty Pretzel on Facebook, call 701-590-1499, or stop in at the worst shop. The Thirsty Pretzel. I had um, an episode with uh, cancer. When I hit that five-year mark, my doctor at um, Cancer Treatment Center of America outside of Chicago suggested to me that my provider in Dickinson at my hospital, you know, do the tests that they would do at Zion. So within um, less than two days, I had both my tests taken and results and um, I was able to stay in Dickinson and not have to travel all those miles. I just feel the fact that they work so closely together um, in making sure that those tests were taken and that my overall health was, was first and foremost in both those minds, whether it was at CTCA, at Zion, or my hospital right here. So I'm just so grateful for that. And we are back on Western Edge Living, presented by CHI St. Alexis Health Dickinson. Thank you so much for watching our program today. We greatly appreciate it. Make sure you check out our website, westernedgelivingtv.com. Our guest today, Terry Thiel with the, with the uh, Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, uh, a job that uh, you're going to keep forever and ever, and you're not going anywhere. You're going to stay right where you're at because we need you in Western North Dakota. Uh, Okay, we know that that's not true. Yeah. We know that as I opened up the show today, I said change is inevitable. We're always in motion. And uh, you're looking at uh, something different, aren't you? I am. What's going on, Terry? Well, it's been 27 years. 27 years. Yeah, so it's You started time. when you were like 12 years old, right? Yeah, right. <laughs> not quite. That was a dog grooming business at 14. <laughs> okay, right? all right, I'm yeah. confused. Anyway. Yeah. Yeah. No, what, what's it, going on? Yeah, it's time for a fresh face. It, you know, we've got a lot of great opportunities coming up. Theodore Roosevelt Presidential Library. Yeah. We've got uh, hopefully a passenger rail coming through. Yeah. Different things like that. But, you know, it just needs some new lift to it. So what are you face. saying? What are you saying? You're kind of dodging around this thing. You're yes. kind of pole bending on your yeah. horse with this yeah. issue. Yeah. You're retiring, aren't I'm you? I'm retiring. Yeah, yeah I am. So That's a loose term, though, I would assume. Kind of is, yeah. yeah. You know, maybe I'll do some things like everybody does, clean a few closets, and then I'll, I'll decide on something else. Do you, you don't have a plan, an exit strategy? Uh, I suppose you do for the job itself. For the job, yeah. yeah. But uh, you're just going to kind of probably uh, take a breather and mm -hmm. figure it out, huh? Yeah, go to maybe some of the places I've been telling people where to go vacation to, right? <laughs> there you go. Yeah, maybe. No, 
I'll be done the end of the year officially. Okay. But I'll be around probably for a couple months yet after that. You know, there'll be a new place in, in, in the position, and that person needs to be trained and go through some things. And uh, we'll be hiring one more person again for the group sales and, and admin. So mm -hmm. I'll be helping out with that. So at that point, I'll, I'll be, uh, you know, doing some training and then slipping in and out and letting those people get adjusted and, yeah. and go from there. You know, earlier in the show, you mentioned uh, the mayor at the time, uh, way back when you uh, transitioned from downtown to uh, uh, your new location. You mentioned that then mayor Fred, rest, Gangler. Fred Gangler, bless his heart, bless mm -hmm. his soul. We miss him greatly, but uh, his wife Shirley is a yes. fixture at, uh, at your office. Yeah, Shirley's been there now for six summers. Okay. Um, so she's, well, and actually it's past winter quite a bit too. And she's there right now, but uh -huh. uh, she's been a wonderful asset. Yeah. He, I mean, Shirley just does everything. And she just loves her job, and she's so good with the people coming in. And I'm really fortunate to have her. So she's your first line greeter, especially in the summer. She starts uh, usually right after Memorial Day, goes through Labor Day. But she works through the winter if I need her. Been gone, you know, to meeting or something. Yeah. Yeah, great. What great was day. her What was her reaction when you said, "Well, we're going to do some changes around here"? Yeah, it kind of surprised her. At first. I think it would. It, it yeah, really no one surely like yeah. I do. Yeah. Yeah, but she'll get along fine. Mm -hmm. But your other interests, I mean, uh, you know, we're friends on Facebook. You're always mm -hmm. posting pictures of uh, your love of horses and mm -hmm. riding in the Badlands. You and your, your mm -hmm. friends get together and uh, go riding, and uh, you love doing ranch work and things mm -hmm. like that. Um, yeah. I'm sure those are all on the table, and you're kind of looking at them. What do we do next, huh? Yeah, no, that'll be fun. No, yeah. I get to do a little bit more riding. I ride the evenings or the weekends, of course, but... You know, if I get a little bit more time during the day in the summer, it'll be nice, too. Mm -hmm. So, okay. and I'm involved with other things, too. I'm on the Gladstone Fire Department, so I help Oh, you are? Out. Yeah, I'm a okay. board member for that. And there's just some other price civic things I'll, I'll get involved with. You mentioned, um, and in an email, too, when we uh, had a report about you coming on the show, you uh, talked about the uh, rail service, mm -hmm. passenger rail service in western North Dakota. And that's something that... Uh, uh, you're very, very interested in. I first interpreted that you were going to work for them, but you're actually uh, just very interested. And you want to be involved with that too, right? Yeah, so the uh, Big Sky Passenger Rail Authority started in Montana probably about in 20, about four years ago. Uh -huh. And I was approached in 2021. There were several of us in North Dakota that they reached out to because they've started, uh, they started the, the movement to get the uh, southern rail line put back in through North Dakota, Montana, all of that from, uh, from Seattle down to Chicago. And I think it was probably 76 or somewhere in that time when the rail stopped here going through Dickinson and through there. And so they want to, to reinstate that. They've got a very strong movement for it. So we've been working with, uh, with the Federal Railroad Administration um, there's been a lot of correspondence about the past few years and support for this. It's been accepted into a corridor ID program through mm -hmm. Congress. And, uh, so, and it was one of um, 69 routes, but this was the longest one. It's about 2,200 miles. So it's under study right now for further, uh, further funding. Uh, they'll be taking a look at all of the different communities along the way to see what are the economics of either stopping or you know you know what are the cities set up to to do or even want actually so that's in the process right now and there'll be more in-depth studies coming up for that you know our the timeline for it is probably about eight years right around there that's if everybody gets in line to do it uh, it just takes time and a lot of it's actually building some of the the engines that they're going to do that oh my. so um and because of even with the restoration of beyond this line there's other ones too so uh, it's just a very large process but you know sometimes eight years look how long some of our other projects have taken and and now we have them so they'll look at uh, twice a day uh, rail service coming no through. No kidding. Twice a day, yeah. Would they utilize some of the services that are in place now or not being used? I, I say that with a beautiful former depot mm -hmm. in Dickinson that's, uh, you know, uh, was part of the rail service earlier. Have, have they gotten to that point yet? To they haven't yet. Yeah. So, you know, some of the things will be looking at the rail lines themselves, um, but each community will have to decide uh, it will be up to each individual railroad um, 
district, I would have to say, or whichever one, what they will allow or not allow for a facility to be used. Um, it would be great. I mean, that'd be a, a, a really good use of that old building down there. Gosh, it'd be wonderful. It, it would. Now, yeah. You know, if it isn't used or it isn't an option, there, there's other options to be found too. Yeah. So does it need to be a grand, you know, big building? It could be a smaller one if that isn't available, but I, I'm, I'm with you. I'd love to see that whole thing oh, restored, absolutely. right? I mean, it'd be perfect. You know, if somebody uh, from my age group, there's a nostalgia side of that. You mm -hmm. know, that wouldn't be that, that tough to market to. Uh, and uh, uh, But the younger, the younger generation, you know, the children and the kids and things, uh, you know, that's going to be something new for them. And so I think you should probably consider, uh, you know, marketing, being the marketing mm -hmm. person. For yeah, the that's a good idea, right? <laughs> right. But you know, when you talk about somebody being younger and a new idea, I had an individual, a, a young gal in my office once, and I, we were just talking about it. And she said, you know, I would love to have that. Do you know what it's like to drive with three kids and go cross country with three screaming kids and you have to drive the car? She said, if I yep. can go by rail, I would love it. Yeah. You know, we're looking at, obviously from my end, it would be the tourism part sure. of it but if you look at medical you've got medical appointments in Bismarck or Fargo or whatever you know what the roads are like so that'd be great for that other meetings or just other travel when we have bad roads here it'd be it'd be great we'll uh, definitely keep an eye on that Terry as your uh, tenure at the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau uh, comes to a conclusion I guess if you will you're still gonna be a part of it obviously as mm -hmm. you mentioned but Looking back over the last 27 years, what, uh, what do you think is uh, your greatest accomplishment, something that you're personally most proud of that you're, you're leaving behind? Oh boy, uh, I've done a lot of statewide things. So statewide, I would have to say probably the legislative work I've done. I've been the chair for the Travel Alliance Partnership for many years, many, many years with that. So I've done a lot with that statewide. Um, in town, well, there's a lot of different things. Um, I'd have to say just the facility that we've got up there and the staff that I've had underneath of me. Yeah. Um, personally, I think our friendship is, you know, one of the greatest things. Uh, I remember when you got the job. I was working on a radio station in town, and uh, we had lunch at Applebee's. Mm -hmm. And uh, we decided, I said, hey, how would you like to be on the radio once a week? And so we established that. So we've had a great friendship. You've taken care of my mother and her oh, passions, yeah. which uh, you know, in the Ukrainian community. So I want to say thank you for that. And I guess I want to thank you for everybody here in uh, Western North Dakota for all the things that you've done. You've been such a wonderful presence uh, with uh, the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau. And I know that uh, um, you, you're leaving it much better than you found it. So congratulations. Thank you. Yeah. Thank you very much. I've enjoyed all of it. I know you have. I you have. have. Great friends yes. here. Okay, well, thank you again for uh, coming on the show today. And we should mention, too, that uh, we're recording this uh, just ahead of uh, Halloween. And Terry is going to, what are you going to be dressed up as at the governor's mansion in yeah. Bismarck? What are you going as? Yeah, so Thursday we'll be over there. I'm going to dress up as a dinosaur. As a dinosaur, okay. Yep, I'm going to represent the museum center over there <laughs> on the lawn in front of the governor's mansion. There'll be kids there. I'll be doing free passes for the dinosaur museum for the kids, so... Thank you so much again. Thanks, Bill. You're a lovely person, and it's been wonderful being your friend. That'll continue. And uh, thanks again for everything that you've done for the western side of the state here at, uh, at the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau. Thank you, Terry. Thank you. Terry Thiel, the uh, executive director of the Dickinson Convention and Visitors Bureau, our guest today. And if you've got an idea for uh, Western Edge Living, why don't you uh, go to our website and find our contact information. Run that idea by us. We'd love to hear it. And uh, who knows, you could be a, a guest on an upcoming episode of Western Edge Living, presented by CHI, St. Alexius Health Dickinson. Thank you for watching. Western Edge Living